my earliest memories of reading was when my oldest sister would bring home her books from school and she would show them to me and read to me and she would teach me how to read in Spanish. I remember looking at the syllables and writing the syllables. I remember taking that book and making sense of it. I remember looking at the black and white illustrations on the page and reading to my mom and my sisters as they made tamales during Christmas. When I was old enough to walk by myself to the Bazan branch, I'd take my brother and we would go to read to read a lot hour, and listening hour at the library. I remember looking through the books and magazines, reading the Boxcar Children series and the Bernstein Bear series. My sister convinced my mom to buy the Mr. Men's and Little Miss series of books. I would devour those and my sister would ask me questions and I'd just be like, yes, it said that there. As I got into my teen years, I was introduced to the chapter book. One of the first books that I read was Where the Red Fern Grows. But the most memorable one for me was The Outsiders. Reading and listening to the story was a whole new experience. As we discussed what happened, I remember shedding a tear when Johnny, Pony Boy's best friend, dies in the hospital from his smoke fire wounds. Perhaps it was because I was making the connection to my brother's untimely death earlier that year. My eighth grade social studies teacher introduced me to poetry by Robert Frost. It was the first time I got serious about looking into that genre. As I got into high school, of course, I liked Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, and other books that were written prose like Serrano de Bergerac and El Cid. I went through a period where I enjoyed mysteries and thrillers like The Pelican Brief and The Firm. My high school teacher, Mrs. Savage, told us as an assignment to start looking at what kind of writer we would be. I remember liking William Faulkner's style of writing. In college, I really lost track of reading for enjoyment as I read for class. I began looking at the new technologies and reading all the journals of psychology and sociology. I think I might have to look at one or two journals on medicine and read up on dissertations of different students. There was a short period of time that I read that I read self-help books and spiritual books. After joining the Navy, I turned to magazines such as uh, Gentleman's Quarterly, Men's Health. With the advent of Facebook in my let's in my late thirties, I started reading the blogs and political articles of interest to me. As I began teaching, I began to read more children's literature books, the big books, the juvenile and the juvenile genres. I was surprised at how authors like Beverly Clearly, Louis Carr, Katie Camino, Phyllis Reynolds just all of a sudden blew up. It's like, what where were these people when I was growing up? I quickly bought novels by these authors. I found easy series for my third and fourth grade classroom, such as the Magic Tree House. Goosebumps, Spiderwick Chronicles, A to Z Mysteries. I was tickled with joy one day when I saw this little boy holding this huge Harry Potter book and turning each page with interest and enthusiasm. Recently, I've been looking into Spanish juvenile as well. And I, when, I, when I read that genre, I go back to my favorite, which is reading the mystery novels which I have found in El Niño Volador, Camaleón, Las Aventuras de Tina La Valiente. As I read those, I began to wonder what kind of genre I like to type, tap into, maybe as a writer. While well, education has always been pushed by my father, it was my sister Lydia who set me on the path to literacy. It is where my imagination was expanded and I was able to learn about life through other people's experiences. And now I can share that love of reading with my students. So thank you, Lily, for that lifetime gift of literacy.